everybody! Today I want to talk about an album by an artist named Harry Nielsen. I'm sure a lot of you know that Harry Nielsen is one of my all-time favorite artists. And this is an album by him that's called A Little Touch of Schmielsen in the Night. Now this album was released in 1973 and it's an album uh, full of old standards from like the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. Um, and it's a bit of a breakthrough album in the sense that this is one of the first of its kind, especially by a major, major recording artist. And by 1973, Harry Nielsen was a huge, huge um, artist in the, in the rock and roll world. He'd released um, the album uh, Nielsen Schmielsen, which was a huge, huge hit. Uh, and he also released the song um, Without You, which was written by uh, Badfinger, of course, but Nielsen took it into the charts and had a number one hit with it and actually won a Grammy Award for the best uh, vocal uh, performance of a song. So Nielsen was like really, really a hot, hot artist at the time in this early 70s. But like Nielsen always did throughout his whole career, uh, instead of recreating another major radio-friendly hit album, uh, he instead recorded an album called um, Son, of, Son of Schmielsen, which kind of had some like kind of comedy songs, but also had some of his usual Nielsen-type songs. But it was going in a different direction completely. And then after that album, he completely abandoned any type of radio-friendly songs at all and decided to record this record, A Little Touch of Schmielsen in the Night. Now, at the time, this was quite a crazy thing to do, and I think a lot of people thought, like, what is Harry Nielsen thinking? Why, why would you record a, an album of standards like this? Now, one other person had done this before, and his name happens to be Ringo Starr. So Ringo, after the Beatles uh, broke up, put out an album called Sentimental Journey, which is the same idea. He recorded a bunch of old songs that his mom used to like, and he recorded them. But the difference between Ringo's album and Harry Nielsen's album is that Harry Nielsen was arguably at the top of his game and decided to make a major left turn and record this album. Ringo at the time was obviously was just getting out of the Beatles um, and his solo album wasn't all that, you know, people weren't standing by waiting to hear what Ringo was going to do. It was more of like a novelty thing. But Nielsen, this album, it's he really, really went out on a, on a limb here and did what he knew that he wanted to do. And what I've read about is that Harry knew that his voice was at the top of its game uh, during this time period, and he wanted to really make a record that showcased his voice. And a lot of people, including me, uh, all think that this album is like the best example of his amazing otherworldly voice. And it really, really is. He sounds brilliant on this record. Now, this particular pressing is an early US pressing. Um, and I actually did pick up a lot of different copies of this uh, of this record just because they're pretty easy to find um, and I just love it so much that over time I've tried to collect as many different pressings as possible. So I listened to um, early UK pressings, I have a German pressing, uh, I had a Japanese pressing, and I had a bunch of other US pressings that were later pressings. Um, they released this album on a bunch of budget labels, uh, like in the late 70s, early 80s. I had a bunch of those pressings. Um, but the best one of all is this early American pressing. And I will show you what this looks like. It's on the RCA Orange label, and it's on their Dynaflex record. And it's just a brilliant sounding record. And the reason this one is a lot better than all the other pressings I just mentioned, in my opinion, is because it has a lot more of a dynamic range. And what I mean by that is that you can almost see through this recording. It's almost in like 3D. There's a lot of depth going on. Uh, when the music gets quiet, you can still hear the music, but there's the definite um, space created around all the instruments. And that is so important for an album like this that has a full orchestra on it. Um, and the strings really, really come through beautifully. Um, and most importantly, Nielsen's voice is just crystal clear on this. And it just soars over all of the music. It's an absolutely amazing listening experience. And if you've never heard this album, I cannot recommend it enough. 
In fact, you don't even have to go and buy this copy I have on my website. Just go find it however however you can, even if you listen to it on Spotify or, or wherever. Listen to this record, because it's so amazing. And it's, for a lot of people out there that maybe, maybe like a an album full of standards with kind of like schmaltzy Hollywood type strings isn't your thing. You wouldn't think it'd be your thing. And that's not really my thing either, to be perfectly honest with you. But this album is a major exception because it's such a unique listening experience um, that it really makes you appreciate, in my opinion, it makes you appreciate these classic old songs and Nielsen's amazing, amazing voice. Now, another thing I want to bring up about this record is that this will set the mood anytime you need to set the mood. Um, this is a record you could put on uh, during a Valentine's Day dinner at home with uh, maybe a glass of wine with the one you love, um, or if you don't drink, just anything that you like to drink, you know, I don't know, a nice cold glass of water, um, a nice dinner, and if this record is on, it will set the mood, you will have a magical evening, and uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, folks, so I just wanted to let you know that this is a sure thing when it comes to setting the mood. So if you're interested in this Harry Nielsen album, you can go to my website, needlemeetsvinyl.com. Check this out. There are some other Nielsen albums on my website at the moment as well, so check those ones out. And I also wanted to talk about one more record. Now, this is a record that doesn't get a lot of mention, in my opinion, and doesn't really have a lot of information about it online. Now, this is an album uh, by The Honey Drippers. Now, some of you out there are probably saying, who in the world are The Honey Drippers? Some of you out there are going, ah, oh, I know what that is. Now, this is a side project of Robert Plant and, uh, further down the line, Jimmy Page. Now, after Led Zeppelin, Robert Plant um, obviously didn't have a band anymore because Led Zeppelin wasn't doing their thing. So he formed his own rhythm and blues band that he always wanted to do, apparently. And he formed the band in like 1981, I believe. And they played a few live shows. Then in 1984, they recorded this EP. This is called The Honey Drippers Volume 1. Now, the interesting thing is that they only ever did this one EP. They never made a Volume 2. They never made any other recordings at all. This is it. Uh, but the really cool thing about this album, besides it sounding fantastic, is the cast of musicians that are on this record. So you have, first of all, Robert Plant singing, which is always brilliant. Then you have Jimmy Page on guitar. So you already have half of Led Zeppelin on this album. Then you get Jeff Beck on guitar as well, who was um, Jimmy Page's bandmate in the Yardbirds. So right off the bat, you have two of the best guitar players ever on one uh, album here. Then, to make it even more insane, Brian Setzer, the amazing guitar virtuoso, also is a guest guest appearance, has a guest appearance on this album. Very cool. Then you get Nile Rodgers, um, who is an amazing producer and guitar player who plays on this. Uh, and the list goes on and on. There are some other heavy, heavy hitter musicians like Paul Schaefer, who played with the um, David Letterman band, uh, who was the leader of David, David Letterman band, um, and uh, uh, David Weckl, who is an amazing drummer. Just amazing musicians who are playing on this record. And I went through a number of different pressings of this, and this is the winner. This one is, as you can see, I will take it a little bit out here. It's in its original shrink wrap. It has its original hype stickers on here with the price, listing the song, uh, includes the song Sea of Love, which, by the way, is amazing on here. Um, and the record itself is in absolutely near mint condition. And I can guarantee that because I was the one that opened this sealed copy. Um, and I did that because I needed to know that it sounded good and it indeed sounds absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it's got a cool label here. So... This is a record that is really, really fun. And in my opinion, if you are a Led Zeppelin uh, collector and you have all their records on vinyl, all the ones that you want, but you are looking for one more thing to add to it, this is the album for you. In fact, my personal copy is right behind you at the moment on my other record shelf where I have uh, the letters H 
through S, and, which would include Led Zeppelin. And I keep this album with the Led Zeppelin albums. It sits right next to um, uh, Coda. I couldn't think of that title for some reason, but it sits right next to the Coda album, right at the end there. And in my opinion, this is a part of the Led Zeppelin discography. I know it's not officially, but in my book, it is. Because it's just such a fun record. It's got two members of Led Zeppelin on it. Um, and it's just a fantastic listen. And by the way, uh, it is considered an EP, but it's a lot longer than a normal EP. It plays like a very short album, in my opinion. Because um, there's three songs on the first side, and on the second side there's two songs, but the last song is has a very, very long jam on it. Uh, which, by the way, is brilliant. So, this is a very, very cool album, uh, and if you have never heard it, or you're just interested in uh, checking it out, or you already have heard it, and you want to get a better sounding copy of it, this is the one for you. All right, well, uh, my iPad ran out of battery, so I had to restart it and uh, charge it up. But I just want to end this video and let you know that this album is available on my website, needlemeetsvinyl.com, and uh, that's it. So check out this album by The Honey Drippers and this amazing album by Harry Nielsen, A Little Touch of Schmielsen in the Night. So check out both these records, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. So bye for now.